In this video, you'll learn how to match scale and perspective in your compositing in Photoshop. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. So some of you guys asked me to make a tutorial about perspective in Photoshop and this week I thought I'll make a quick tutorial to show you how to match scale and perspective to make your compositing look realistic. So I have a few examples for you today to demonstrate a few different scenarios and show you the different types of perspective. So in this first example we have a simple composite and we want to match the perspective of the subject with the background. So to make this composite look realistic, we have to match something that is called the horizon line. So let's look at our subject and I'm going to shift click on my layer mask to show the, the original background. And as you can see, this is the horizon line of the original image. And the horizon line essentially is where the sky and the ground meet together. So this line right here is the horizon line of our subject. And we simply need to match that with the horizon line of the background. So we simply need to drag the subject to the top until the horizon lines are matching together. Now we can turn off the background. And as you can see, the subject is now matching better with the background and it's looking realistic. So if I drag it to the top, the subject is going to look like a giant. And also if I drag it to the bottom, it's going to look really small. So that's the most basic way to match perspective in a composite. Now there's a few more types of perspective. And in this next example, we have a what's called a one point perspective. And it's called a one point perspective because if you follow the leading lines in the buildings and in the street using the line tool, you'll find that all the lines will meet in one point. And that point is called the vanishing point. And the horizon line will be also in that point. So for example, if you want to match the perspective and you cannot see the horizon line, you can use this technique to find the vanishing point and the horizon line and match it with your subject. So now that you know what a one point perspective is, let me show you how you can use it to match your composite with your background. So in this example, I already drew the lines to find the vanishing point and you can simply do that using the line tool, which is underneath the rectangle tool. Then you can increase the weight from here. And you're going to simply draw some lines and follow the leading lines in the walls to find your vanishing point. So because I already did that, I know that my vanishing point is here. I also have my subject extracted from the background. And I also added some adjustment layers to match the light and the color. I also draw some lines to find the vanishing point for my subject image. And if I show you the original image, I have it here as a smart object and I can double click on the smart object and I can turn off my layer mask to show you the original image. I'm going to close and save the file. You will see that I also follow the leading lines in the wall to find my vanishing point. Okay, so now let's match the perspective of this subject with the background. So first of all, I'm going to select both the subject and the lines group and I'm going to scale my subject because it's a little bit big at the moment. And now by following the vanishing point rule, now what we need to do is match the vanishing point of the subject, which is this one with the white lines, to the vanishing point of the background image. You can use the arrow keys to get to match it exactly how you want. And you can also use the shift key to keep the subject locked with the horizon line of the background. So when you follow this rule, your perspective will always be matching and your compositing will look much more realistic. But you don't have to follow this rule exactly. Sometimes there is a room of error. And in this case, even when we match the vanishing points together, I can still feel that the subject is still a little bit big because in the original subject layer the image was cropped out and I did not find much information to get an accurate vanishing point. So in cases like these you're just going to analyze your background image and scale your subject based on the objects around it. 
So in this case, if I hold shift and move my subject to the right, you can see that it's still a little bit big. And I know that because I'm comparing it to the street lamp and also the door of the store here. So, so we can still scale the subject down a little bit. And, and now when we compare the subject with the objects around it, it looks much better now. So in this case, we did have to move the vanishing point of our subject a little bit down. And that's okay, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. Okay, so now that we match the scale, I'm going to accept the changes. And now I'm going to also hide the lines of my subject. So now that we have matched the scale, we can also match the perspective and scale our subject based on the vanishing point. So let me click on Ctrl T to scale my subject again. And if I zoom in, you'll see that you have the anchor point in the middle and you can move this anchor point wherever you want. So to scale your subject in perspective, you're going to move this anchor point to the vanishing point. And now if you hold Alt when you're scaling, you'll see that your subject is scaling based on that vanishing point and it's following the perspective. So if I click on Ctrl T again, I'm going to take my anchor point back to the vanishing point. And if I scale my subject and compare it with this lamp, you will see that it's still matching even when we scale the subject. So if I scale my subject down, it will always follow that perspective and it's going to look right no matter how much you scale it. Okay, here's another example where you can use this technique to manipulate existing objects and scale them in perspective. So in this example, I extracted the car in the foreground along with its shadow and I have them in a group. I also drew some lines to find the vanishing point and if I click on Ctrl T and move the anchor point to the vanishing point, I can scale the car up and make it look like it is in front of the girl. Okay, here's another example and we don't have to use this technique on street images. We can also use them in architectural images like this. And for this example, I also have my subject extracted from the background and I also drew the lines to find my vanishing point. So now if I click on Ctrl T to scale my subject, I'm going to move my anchor point to the vanishing point. I can scale my subject and make it look like it is far away. Or closer to the camera. And you'll be able to see the scale better when we have some objects around our subject. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make two copies of my subject. I'm gonna scale this one in perspective and make it look like it is far away. And I'm gonna also scale this one. and make it look like it is in the front. So now if I take another copy of my subject, and this time I'm not gonna scale it in perspective, I'm just gonna move it to the back. You will see that now it's looking much bigger than it needs to be. And the same goes if I drag it to the front, you will see that the subject now is looking so small. So always use this technique to scale your subject in perspective and make it look more realistic. Okay, now that I've shown you the different ways to match and scale your subject in perspective, there's also two other types of perspective and those are the two-point perspective and the three-point perspective. And basically these will follow the same rules but in these cases you have multiple vanishing points and you can scale your objects based on different vanishing points. I also have an in-depth article on my website where I talk about Photoshop compositing in depth and I also talked about the different types of perspective in depth. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for you to go and read that article. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. You'll find all the project images in the description below. 
Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next tutorial.